Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Linda's Creative Boutique. I am so happy that you decided to stop by and watch me do a little bit of crafting. Um, I want to say welcome to all of my new subscribers. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so I have in front of me everything... I think I have everything in front of me that I use to create these um, spring daffodils and I actually share this with you all that I had purchased from Heartfelt Creations and these are the ones that I um, created so far um, and one of my subscribers mentioned in her comments that she wanted to see or she couldn't wait to see how I used the um, shaping mold so even though this is going to be a process video um, because I want to show you like the process of how I created those daffodils um, and also how you use the shaping mold to get the texture and you I don't know if you can see the texture um, you can probably see a little bit and how I got the texture I'm trying to see um, yeah you can see it a little bit how I got the texture on the flowers to give them a um, more of a life like life like <laughs> appearance so is what I'm going to do is kind of clear some of this stuff out of the way and then um, show you all the process. Now so that it's not super long, I went ahead and cut out my flowers. So this is the larger one and then this is the smaller one. So that, you know, saved us a little time so I don't have to, you know, take the time to cut all these out. So I went ahead and cut those out. These are some that I had. Um, that I did you can probably see the texture on these and excuse my hands they're a little um, dry I've been working <laughs> um, yeah you can see the texture a little bit better on these like you can see the ridges and all now I'm gonna be using the stamp so that you can uh, see the veins in the flowers however you don't necessarily have to stamp them you can actually cut them out and um, use your inks to color them the color that you want but I just I like to see the veins because it gives it more of a realistic look um, so everything that I'm going to be using I'm going to be using of course those I have my blending brushes right here um, I have my baby wipes right here and these smell so good I'm going to get some more of these they're Target brand um, but they're the antibacterial um, hand wipes actually so I'm gonna uh, get some of these my son actually picked these up for me uh, by mistake I wanted him to get me something else but this is what he got me but they smell so good so anyway I got those to kind of keep my area clean if I need to um, I have my barely barely art precision glue I have my mini um, snip scissors I have the prills that I'm going to use and this these are the ones that I share with you all they're called orange juice and if you can um, see inside my flower that's where the prills I put those in the bottom and um, then I have my stamping block that we're going to use for stamping and these are the inks that I am using these are the dye inks by Memento and they call these the uh, do drop. They used to call them um, uh, tulips, I think, because they, I guess, they're in the shape of a flower tulip. But anyway, um, they're do drops now. So these are by Memento. So I'm using the Tangelo, I'm using the Ladybug, uh, the Cantaloupe, and the Dandelion. Um, I'm using my finger protector for when I'm applying glue. I am using my uh, flower shaper by Sizzix. Let me show you how I use that. <coughs> Excuse me. I have my tweezers here, my reverse tweezers that I'll be using. My um, owl, I can never say that right. 
I have this paintbrush that I'll be using the end of it to help shape my flowers. I have this, um, my spell binders all in one tool in case I need it. And I have my stamen right here that are in the middle. I also cut out some of the butterflies, but I don't know if I'm going to share that today. I just kind of did a little bit with those right there. I, I didn't particularly like them. So probably won't be stamping those. But um, my stamen, I use, and of course, my hot glue gun. And I keep my stamen in this box right here. I bought this at Hobby Lobby a few years ago. And um, I actually added this right here to make it, uh, to match my craft room. <laughs> So I kind of DIY'd this myself. But I have all of my stamen in here. My flower centers and all of that. So um, that's it. So let me go ahead and clear some of this out. And then we will get started. Okay, so let's get started. I guess I'll go ahead and start with the larger flowers. And um, I stamped. I stamped them in two different colors. I actually stamped the larger one. If you'll um, see right here, this one's a little lighter than this one. This one's a little lighter. And because I stamped the smaller one using the ladybug for the veins, and then I stamped the um, larger one using the tangelo. So, and then I just use, you know, them all to blend. So, this one right here, let me see. Okay, so, let's go ahead and get started with the stamping. So, I'm pulling off my smaller stamp here. Um, no, I'm starting with the larger one. So, I'm, I'm going to pull this one off. And, um, after I, after I, um, got them cut out I had an afterthought that maybe I should have stamped them before I cut them out however no problem because these are very easy to line up if you just look at this right here it's very easy to line them up so this is what I did um, I just have a scrap piece of paper right here move that over there and so I took my ink and I just inked it up real good real good and then I laid my I kind of lined it up if you can see the um, like the ridges the edges and I just really lined it up and I'm getting ink on me and laid it down and I took my scrap piece of paper and just um, press it to rub that in which you know this you could do it like this and then there is that okay so um so i'm actually doing the larger one i think i said i was going to do that in the dark color but I actually i'm doing the larger one with the red it doesn't even matter <laughs> because when you put them all together it'll um i'm just going to line it up and if you happen to move it a little bit, it's fine because by the time you finish blending and all that, um, you really won't even be able to tell the difference. See how this right here is not exactly lined up with this edge? It's fine because, uh, well, this part right here is going to be folded to fold, but um, say if it's not lined up at the top. Let me see if this one, see if I can kind of show you. Uh, okay like this one if you can see right here on the edge where it's not really and you really can't tell that's why I said it's not gonna matter even if you don't line it up just right because by the time you finish blending and all that it is it's gonna look fine okay so now that I've pretty much shown you the technique I'm gonna go ahead and finish the flower the flower um, the little cup part and then I'll do the the leaf part um, of the flower. Well, this is not a leaf. I'm trying to think of 
this petal right here petals that's what they are <laughs> so i'm gonna uh finish these and then i'll come back and i'll just show you how to line these up and then the smaller ones i'll um do them i'll get them all stamped and then uh we'll come back and show you the next part of the process okay so i have all of the cup parts done and as what i do is i just take my paper instead of um you could take baby wipes and clean your stamps but with this process, I just take this paper and dab it until it all cleans off. Okay, and now I have my larger uh, petal stamp right here. Now, um, they included the butterfly on this stamp, which is fine. Um, because, you know, when you stamp your petals it's not going to matter because that's going to be off to the side anyway so same process <clears throat> just stamp up that stamp i mean ink up that stamp really good and then you're going to take your petal and then it looks like let me see i think this is good right here and so I'm going to take this paper and you could just rub it without the paper. I take the paper. I use the paper. Number one, it keeps it from shifting. Um, number two, if, um, if, um, you know, the, the, the paper isn't actually covering your stamp. You won't run the risk of, you know, getting ink all over your hands. You're going to get some probably on your hands. But, you know, that just um, keeps you from getting any ink. Now, see how this is off? I just wanted to show you. See how this didn't stamp exactly to the edge? That's not even going to matter. Because by the time we do all the blending, you won't even be able to tell that. And these, I kind of found it a little difficult to line up. Because the petals, I thought they were all the same size. But some of them look a little wider. Like this one, to me, looks more slender. So I was trying to line up the one that I thought looked more slender. And I don't know. I'm off again. I can tell on that one. But it's not going to matter. Because by the time I blend it and all that, nobody will even know unless they just get a magnifying glass and uh, <laughs> look really hard at it. So is what I'm going to do is go ahead finish these i'm gonna go ahead and do the smaller ones and then uh we'll get to the next step in the process okay so we got everything stamped so i ended up using the uh tangelo on uh the smaller flower and then the ladybug as i had shown you initially on the um larger ones so we're done with this stamping block because we've done all of our stamping and um so the next step is to get the colors blended how we want them now let me tell you i am no expert at this um <laughs> i um am, am I, I am an amateur when it comes to um blending or whatnot however i think i did i think i did fairly well i think i did pretty good so i think i did well enough to be able to show you all how to do it okay so initially i was using my and let me just show you my little ink daubers right here and i didn't like the way um the ink was blending so i decided to use my little um blending brushes so let me go ahead i'm gonna go through a few uh well i'll let me see i'll go through one of each just to uh show you <clears throat> show you the blending technique for those of you that are new to this um just to give you um you know an idea of how to blend your inks okay so for these flowers so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do the ones that I stamped with the ladybug. And I'm going to first use my dandelion. Why? I don't know. I just like it. I just like 
I just like starting with the lighter color and then build build my color as I go so I'm just taking my brush and I'm just gonna blend this color in and then the other thing I like about these uh, brushes is they don't leave like a harsh circle or a line or anything when you're blending when you're using the um, ink daubers that I just showed you usually you know you have to like start off the edge and come in so that it's uh, the colors not so dark or it doesn't leave those rings um, so I just like the brushes better for th for this I do use my ink daubers for the projects but for this um, I'd rather use these and then the other thing about these blending brushes is that um, like with the daubers like you can't really like mix your colors say like I just put this yellow on I said so look see if you look here there's nothing coming off of the brush um, with the ink daubers that ink is in there so it's gonna transfer to whatever you're working on which is no problem really if you're blending because everything's gonna kind of blend together anyway but um, yeah so okay and then so for the ones that I stamped in the Tangelo, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to apply my lighter color here. So really, like, when you get done blending, your brush kind of, like, goes back to a clean state, so to speak. There's nothing left to transfer and then um, when I'm using the darker colors like the red uh, sometimes I will go off to my little scratch paper and just do that just to ensure that there's nothing on there okay so I'm just gonna close that up for a moment I'm gonna be using it again I'm sure um, but let's just go where we are okay so I'm, is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ladybug red and this is where I'm going to get my base right here. And I'm going to add my darker color right here. They are doing construction on this house across the street from me. And, um, okay, I had to look because it, that didn't sound too good, but whatever they just did. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put a little bit on the, the edges as well. And I am like barely touching uh, my paper because I don't want this like super dark. Um, like the center right here. I want like a focal point right here on the center part. So I am, uh, you know, making sure I get all of the ink on there. And then the same thing with my uh, petals right here. And then I want some of the darker color up top. At the tip so what I'm gonna do is kind of come in and just focus on that part right there just to kind of add a little bit more color to that and then the same with this I'm gonna start in the middle and the reason I start in the middle is because if you start like actually on the the petal you're gonna have too much dark it's gonna be too dark there so um, I just start in the middle and let it kind of uh, blend up okay and then I'm gonna focus here then a little bit here across the top okay all right now um, I'm not going to use the cantaloupe just yet well let me see on the let me see here let me see maybe I'll do a little bit just kind of here in the middle 
just a little to tone that yellow down just a tap. And then maybe this one a little bit. All right, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. Okay, so I'm gonna close my inks up. All right, here's the fun, fun part. <laughs> okay, oh wait, let me do the back. Um, and with the back, I'm just gonna pretty much kinda do maybe two colors because um, you don't have to do the back. It just depends on how you're going to have your flowers. Like if they're going to be like glued down, like positioned down like this, you don't necessarily have to do the back. But um, on the cup part, you do because both sides are going to be showing. Okay. So you can leave it white if you want. But I'm just going to do a little something so that when that, um, you know, from the back, you'll be able to see, you know, color. So I'm going to do that. And I was going to uh, stop the video, but I just want you all to see this process. Um, to show you that I'm not going to put as much time and attention on the back as I did the front. Okay, because we just want just a little color. Just a little color. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm glad that you decided to stop by and tune in. Check out this process. Okay, so as you see, I didn't do like a whole lot of color, but I am going to um, add some dandelion. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit. I finished with the dandelion, so I'm going to add a little bit of the cantaloupe just to give it a little, um, you know, blend it a little bit more. Like I said, I'm not really focusing a lot on the bags. And to make these... You need two. Uh oh. <laughs> you need two um, petals because you're gonna stack them, overlay them. Okay, so that's good enough. That's good enough for the bag. I don't need to focus any more on the back. Now these are the two extras that I picked up so because I remembered that I needed to do um, two for each one. So I'm going to do just a little bit here on these tops. so that that yellow is not so, so, so bright. And it's okay if you leave like little white portions, uh, not on the edge, but like in the uh, petal, because it, it'll also give it more of a realistic look. And, um... Guys, I went back to Hobby Lobby. 
to look at the sublimation clearance items and they're just not clearance enough for me so I didn't get anything but I did pick up some other things um, that I'm going to share with you all after I get this done um, I'll do another video to share with you all I'm just trying to make sure everything kind of looks blended okay and I believe that's it we got all of our backs done okay now also when you cut the uh, the cup part out if you see it has little slits right here that's where I have my little like nipping scissors because when you cut just cut the ends off to um, open that and it's going to help you fold in your uh, your petals so I'm going to go ahead and do this and then we're going to get ready to uh, do the shaping mold now I have the uh, the big shot is it the big shot whatever the big one the wide format um, die cutting machine I have it because it's large and heavy I have it on the other side of my craft room so as what I'm going to do I'm going to show you how to put these in the shaping mold and then I'm going to take it over to the other side of the room to run it through my um, die cutting machine but I'm going to show you let me see what we got here okay so this is the top part where you see the the open holes on these right here they're actually going to lock down in the bottom part okay to help you get your impressions and let me see oh, there it is. all right so I'm going to take the top part off and I'm trying to stay in frame as much as I can so it's what you're going to do you're going to turn them upside down and you're going to put them in your shaping mold like so okay and then you're going to <clears throat> and remember when I was telling you off you watched my last well the video that I showed this I was saying you know that you use water it'll help the only thing sometimes my water doesn't spray out like it should and it'll come out in globs <laughs> and it'll cause my let me see like right here I don't know if you can see it right here where it kind of looks like watercolor a little bit because you can see a little bit I don't know if you all can see that but you can uh, anyway it comes out like in globs and I hold it up and I spray you don't want a lot of water you just want to mist it so I just sprayed it I probably was out of frame but I just held it up real high um, from here and I missed it and then you're just going to lay this down on top okay and then I will show you how I sandwich it before I put it in my cutting machine so I take my plates I just lay it on my plates sandwich it in and then run it through and I'm going to go do that really quick And then show you all what it looks like. And if I put a maybe a piece of maybe shim paper in it, it may give me a a better mold. But I just ran it through, and so this is what it's going to look like. So see how it. it molds into the um, shaping mold and it gives you your little dips and all that and then there's that one okay I hope you all can see that pretty good okay and I'm gonna go do these 
and I'm just going to hold it far away and do a little spritz of water. And then I'm going to take the top portion, lay it in there, and go run it through my machine. And my board, my um, my cutting boards are kind of bent, so that could have something to do with the pressure. But I just flip this one. I just flip them over. I'm going to see if I get a better. Uh, impression. Okay, here we go. Hmm. Sort of. But you see how they look like like they give them that that real good texture. So I'm thinking maybe if I add a little bit of pressure and I'm just going to clean this up. These are those shop towels that you can buy in the um, automotive section at like Walmart. I get mine at Walmart but they last a long time. Uh, I think I shared before how I use them. I will cut them in uh, fours let me just show you if you haven't seen that video. And I'll put them in here. And I'll cut them and just keep them in here so that when I need a just a small piece, I'll have it. And this is the roll. But, you know, I cut them in fours. And, um, yeah. So, um, let's see. What's next? Okay, so we did that part. We got that done. So the next part is putting them together. That's the fun, 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 fun part. <laughs> so we've, we're done with the stamping for now. Um, sometimes you may have to go back and like touch up a little bit, but um, just for video sake, we're just going to. Um, and I thought I was gonna need this, but I don't. But it's what you do is you take it and you use it like to bend your flowers to give them that bend like that but because I have the shaping mold I don't need that okay so let me I had my fan on because I was kinda hot <laughs> okay so it's what we're gonna do first now initially I um, was using wet glue but it was taking so long for it to dry, I decided to switch to my hot glue. So I'm just going to put a little bead like that. And then I'm putting it around. Uh, I'm not putting it exactly in the center because we're going to need to pierce the center. And we don't want the glue to be there, you know, make it hard to pierce. But see how that looks? It's got the little bends and all that in it super cute so doing the same thing with this one just putting it around not directly in the center okay and then there's that one see how the petals got the little wrinkles in it to make it look lifelike I love it okay and so now I'm going to take my Owl, I think that's how you say it. I never can say it right. And I'm going to punch a hole. And the reason I'm using this is because the barrel is big enough to make a large hole. And that's what we need. A large hole because we're going to have to be able to put our stamen in there. So I'm going to do this with both. And just push it all the way through. And make sure... The holes are large enough. Okay. Um, now it's time to assemble the cup part of our flower. So I'm just going to bend that. Like that. Um, now the other thing is if, you'll, if you noticed on the 
picture right here how the tulips are kind of um, fluted out uh, I was trying to get that look but I couldn't get mine to really bend like they should so I just did the best I could and then once I got them assembled you know I kind of took my hands and um, and tried to bend them but to me they look fine either way because even though I was bending them they kept like like on these right here they kept like standing up so I'm like you know it's fine all right and so we're gonna bend the tab right here because that's where we're gonna glue okay and you want to kind of take the the little parts that you cut and just fan them out well no fan them in take that back you want to fan them in because that's how we're gonna uh, put them on the petal part okay so I'm just gonna take I'm using my um, my little precision glue gun because it puts out just a little bit of glue and that's what I need I don't need big globs of glue so we're gonna stick that together okay and there you go and we're gonna do the same here these little ones can be a little Fiddlesome, <laughs> if that's a word. Fiddly. I know when I was, um, for those of you that have followed me for some time, you may know that um, I was actually born in Germany. My dad was military. And um, so some of the words that they would use in Germany, like my mother would use them. So, of course, you know, a child hears it and, you know, they're going to repeat it. And she used to always say, stop fiddling around. Stop fiddling around. <laughs> and sometimes now, you know, it'll just come back to me when something's kind of a little tedious. And I'll be like, it's kind of fiddly. Okay, now for the stamen. Now, if you notice, these are like a cream color. But I want them to match my flowers. So, I'm going to do about, uh, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll probably do those for the large one and then maybe do like maybe six for the smaller one and so the reason I have my little finger protector here is because um, it's kind of um, and this one's not clipped it's kind of uh, difficult to keep these together So, is what I do is I put a little glue on the ends because see how they're already falling? Like they're they're really hard to keep together. Now, a lot of people put their stamen in different ways. Uh, I put mine in how I feel like it works best for me. Okay. So maybe I should take this off <laughs> so I can use my finger. Okay. And is what I do is I take them and I try to make sure they're pretty even and I fold them and then it's kind of hard just to use them loosely like this so it's what I do is I take a little glue and I just put it on there and then I use my little media board right here and I um, just stick the glue on them and that keeps them together okay just a little tip a little media mat okay and then we have these for the smaller one <clears throat> same thing gonna fold them Put a little glue and then 
kind of stick them together just so that they're like one cohesive piece okay all right and so now I like to put mine in here first because it's difficult to me to try to put them through here and then put them on on the petal and it was difficult for me so this is how I like to do mine I just like to take them open it up on the bottom and just slide them through there that worked best for me okay got one trying to escape here get in there <laughs> okay and then I just take the bottom and I fold it if you all can see that I just fold it under and try to take my stamen and center them as best I can okay and then I take a little glue and put it under the bottom and I need to put some more glue in my glue gun okay and I just take it take that off and I glue it like that Oh, I forgot to show you all a step. I just thought about it when I put them in here. Okay, I got sidetracked. Okay, so this is what I did because I didn't want my stamen white. And I just thought about it when I saw them in here white. So it's what I did is I, I'm going to try to do this inside of here. See if I can get some of that color on there. There we go. So they're not, you know, so they match the project. See, it's never too late. When you make a little oopsie, you can always go back and fix it. But this is what I was doing. This is how I did it initially. Was I um, just, you know, use my ink to give them the color that I wanted them to have. So that's, you know, another option. That's why a lot of times I like to buy white, um, white items. is because, you know, you have the option to make them the color you want instead of trying to buy, buy a whole bunch of different colors like ribbon and stuff like that sometimes I'll just get white that way I can make it the color that I want and so again I'm just gonna pull these up through here okay these are trying to lean to the side the smaller ones are a little bit fidgety to work with Okay, so I had to go off camera to get this one. I'm going to put just a dab of glue under the bottom of each one because it was uh, giving me a little, a little hard time. Now look at that. A little hard time. Okay. And you know, stuff always happens when you're trying to record. So it is what it is. Okay. So, this is pretty much it. I'm going to show you one more thing. Well, maybe two more. Um, adding the, um, where are they? The prills. Now, I know they're here on my desk. <laughs> because I just, I just had them. They're hiding somewhere. There they are. The prills. Okay, so um, that's pretty dry. All right, so you see how the inside, it looks unfinished. Okay, so as what I did was used my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And I just put a little bit of glue, just a little bit on the inside. And it's coming out really fast.
I'm just gonna let that glue um, some got right there. We don't want that because we don't want them sticking up here. So we'll wipe that off. And you can see the glue in there. Come on. Trying to get it to move to this side as well. All right. So what I'm going to do is take my prills and just pour them in there. And then I'm going to try to pour them back in the jar. Let's see. Without having them running everywhere. And so there they are on the inside. So it just really kind of finishes that off. <coughs> Excuse me. And it, there's a, seems like there's a top or something that goes on this. On this. It shouldn't be like that open. Let me see. I'm trying to get the glue down in here without getting it on the stamen because I don't want my prill sticking to the stamen. Come on. Let me see if I do this if I can get it and then there it goes on the side again let's get that off okay I think I have enough glue down in there to make this work and you want to try to tap off as much as you can back in your jar okay and there we go and once it dries it'll be uh, it'll be just fine okay now one other thing and then we're going to be done with this is um, you might notice after you finish with your flowers you might notice that you want like a little bit more color see how this is just like one solid color you can always take your blending brush and let's say I want to add a little of this red just to the edges a little bit and I don't want it like super dark so I'm gonna just rub it on there and then go in and add a little bit of color now if you want it dark you don't have to wipe it off you can just add it on there and see how that adds just a little bit of um, you know it's not one color so you can go back and do your edges and add that color see how that makes it a little little different and this one's the same way I'm just gonna add a little bit because I mean flowers aren't perfect if you ever examine the flower, a examined a flower, you will see, you know, that they're not perfect. And I think that's what makes them beautiful, you know. Everything is not 100% on point. And that's it. And so these are the daffodil, the spring daffodils that I created using um, the heartfelt dies and uh, shaping mold and the stamps and I think they turned out really pretty um, I could put a stem on them and make like a nice little bouquet and I can also take them and you know put them on a project if I choose so there are a lot of things that you can do with uh, with these flowers so I just want to uh, wanted to share that with you all and just to show you how the uh, the shaping molds work they have a lot of different ones for a lot of a lot of their different flowers um, so that you know they'll fit in there uh, and give them that texture that you're looking for on your flower so that's it 
thank you so much for stopping by. I hope I was able to help um, someone uh, learn a little bit about blending if you didn't know anything about blending and just making flowers. So thank you all for watching and I will see you in my next video. Until then, take care of yourselves and as always, be blessed. Bye.